I conceived my first child who was born in 1970. Uh, during the early years of that first marriage. And I conceived that child, the child was born. I did not know, and the community did not know, that that particular doctor, the OBGYN, was closely affiliated with Planned Parenthood. He also accepted their agenda. He would birth the babies in the hospital, but unbeknownst to many people, he was doing those DNCs for mysterious female ailments in his office without telling people. I ended up being a victim of that procedure. I had a living baby, and I went to get a pregnancy test several months later after that baby was born, and the doctor decided, you don't need another baby, let's see. Instead of giving me a pregnancy test, he gave me a DNC, and that was my first abortion without even really understanding. After that first abortion, I began to be sad, depressed, and, uh, but I had been advised I'm sending you to a place called Planned Parenthood. Talk to them. Don't talk to your family about this. Don't talk to the church. And so here I am trying to get advice from Planned Parenthood on how to cope with how I was feeling after this procedure, which was an abortion. And um, it just, things began to spiral downwards. In 1973, a law passed, Roe versus Wade in 73. And uh, I was told, now Planned Parenthood can really help you now. And uh, you just go talk to them about any problems. I conceived another child. I went to Planned Parenthood. This time I knew I was pregnant. And I was looking for advice and they said, oh, it doesn't seem like you're ready for another baby. We've got a new procedure. It won't hurt as much as pulling a tooth. They lied to me. I took that procedure. I agreed to do that and it was another abortion. So I had one living child, two aborted children. My body suffered, my mind and my spirit, my heart. During the next several years, um, I contracted from the chemicals in the procedure, something called phlebitis, uh, and I just knew I, I was sick in my soul and my body was hurting. When I experienced my own abortions, my body was harmed, my spirit was wounded, my soul was confused, I was confused in my mind. It affected my first marriage because I was argumentative, did no longer enjoy intimacy, physical intimacy with my husband. Um, my weight began to fluctuate. There were so many problems. Um, between the chemicals and the surgeries and all the procedures, uh, my circulatory system began to dysfunction. There were so many problems. And sometimes I would think about the babies. And I might wonder for a moment, was it a girl or was it a boy? And this went on for many, many years. I sometimes would just think about babies. And as I began to marry for the second time and have other children, I couldn't really even bond with those children. Because somewhere in my subconscious, I felt guilty about the ones who weren't there. So then, how could I be a good mother to the ones who were there? Miraculously, in the mid-1970s, I had been divorced by that time. And because uh, these procedures affected my whole being. And I became pregnant again. Daddy King, who had saved me from abortion in 1950, said to me, I said, Granddaddy, I'm pregnant. And I think I'm gonna go over to Planned Parenthood and get an abortion. It, it won't hurt as much as pulling a tooth. He said, baby, they're lying to you. That's not a lump of flesh. That's my great grandchild. The baby's daddy agreed with my grandfather and that child was born. So I was moving into a new place. Uh, I was, had been pro-choice, had been a client of Planned Parenthood, was not satisfied, was confused and hurt, but didn't know who to talk to. Blessedly, over the next few years, I began to talk to God. And as I talked to God, and I, I could hear my uncle's words again, uh, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. A woman has a right to choose what she does with her body, but the baby's not her body. Where is the lawyer for the baby? And in 1983, I was born again, received Christ as my Lord and Savior, confessed of all of my sins, including abortions, and I then became a voice for life. If I can tell this story and still smile today because my Savior lives, God forgives. There is therefore now no condemnation 
for those who are in Christ Jesus. If you're a man or a woman who has experienced abortion, there is hope for you and there's definitely forgiveness and our children will greet us one day in heaven. I began the project of writing a book called King Rules a few years ago. And many times when I travel all over the world, all over the country, people will ask one question. What was it like growing up in a family with Martin Luther King? And I would always remember that there were standards and principles. So I began to write a book, King Rules, and uh, there's a scripture, may the king's rule be refreshing. And I was not not thinking about the King family, Martin Luther King's family, but the King of Kings, Jesus. And I wanted to record some of those memories and some of those standards for my children, my grandchildren, and all the children of the world. My uncle, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the brother of my daddy, Reverend A.D. King, and their father, Daddy King, Dr. Martin Luther King Sr., were very pro-life and as uh, pro-life men, and I, you know, in, in the 20th century, there's so much argument over, let's be politically correct, pro-choice, pro-life. They stood for the sanctity of life. It was not politics for them. And so I believe if my uncle Martin Luther King Jr. were alive today, he would not have changed his position. He said injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And certainly he would regard that little baby in the womb as a human being. He would have based that on Jesus and John the Baptist meeting when they were both in the wombs of their mothers. And as a matter of fact, he would preach that sermon, you know. And so uh, Jesus wept and John the Baptist leapt. And so uh, he would support life, the sanctity of life. And if he were here today, he would encourage everybody to do that. So the purpose of healthcare is, should be to make someone live better, feel better, be more healthy. And so how can you heal somebody by killing somebody? We know that the issue of life is not a political issue. This is a moral issue. It's a spiritual issue. And God has instructed us to choose life. We cannot choose life if we abort our babies.